Hello and welcome. Today we are talking about a movie by the name of Black Ruby. This actually cites itself as being the first movie to be recorded on an iPhone 7. My following movie, Unseen, which was released last year, I think we know just what can be done with that, but this is saying it was first. This movie was, although not released until March, this movie was the first one to do this. So let me tell you something about the directors and stars before we get on to a synopsis. Before I start this, please, apologies for pronunciation, this probably will not be good. The movie was actually written and directed by Zachary Lautides. This is actually his third movie that he has written and starred in. We have two other credits, credited directors here on the project with him. Um, La Raza and Monica Esmeralda Leon. So some of the stars within the movie, and again, pronunciation, I apologise. We have director, director, writer Zachary Latudes as Louis Katz, Joseph Manella as Jules Mandel, Crystal E. Heredia as the titular character Ruby, and Rick Morgan as Solomon. Um, so to the synopsis, what is this one about? So this follows two best friends, I use that word very loosely, Lewis and Jules, and um, they're hustlers, jazz musicians. Um, Jules has a father who was a famous jazz musician. He wants to follow in his footsteps, but he doesn't quite have the talent required, which is where Lewis comes in. Lewis is quite a tortured soul. He ha actually has the writing talent. They're working to get Jules a hit record to make the big time. The characters themselves, Jules is a thoroughly dislikable character. Um, he's a womanizer, he's a slob. Um, he is actually engaged and he's in a very abusive relationship with his fiance. Um, to start with, that appears from his end, from he's, the guy is just not a nice person but she very much also. It's just an abusive relationship and it seems the only reason he is there is because he is due to inherit um, a furniture corporation from her father. So it's sort of like he tends to keep people in his life that serve him, his friend Lewis, and um, he's using him to, to write songs. He's even using him to street fight, to raise money for them, to basically get by and and be allowed to, to sort of be musicians. Lewis, on the other hand, um, has a bit more depth. Um, he's a troubled character. He has a bit of a delinquent past. He's on medication. He's not totally that well, um, but there is a lot of depth to the character, and I felt myself being really drawn to the character of Lewis, um, whereas Jules just was completely repugnant, and that has to be, kudos has to be given to the actors for that, for being able to evoke the emotions from that. Alongside obviously Jules and Lewis we have the titular character of Ruby um, who has to be said is the most beautiful woman, um, very striking, very visually appealing. It's very apparent why she was used in the movie and although she does a good job I do feel she was left behind a bit with the performances of the two lead actors. Um, do you actually leave her behind a little bit? Just not as deep, just not quite as multi-layered as the other two performances that we see within this movie. Another character that we have in the movie is called Kazi, I think I'm pronouncing that, I can't remember exactly. He is a bit of a hoodlum, he arranges the street fights. He actually narrates this entire story, which I felt was a really interesting layer and add a little bit more difference to the movie. We have another sort of viewpoint coming in here and I really like that little touch that they put in. So Ruby enters the two friends' lives and she turns pretty much everything upside down, including their pre-imagined friendship. Lewis falls for her in a big way. He falls in love with her. He has a depth of feeling. Um, Jules also falls for her a little bit, but not in the same way that, that Lewis does. Um, I don't want to go into too much about the storyline and what happens. I will leave it there, just with the relationship between friends, how Ruby affects that, what comes about from that. But this movie is very much about um, characters, about um, seeing more than one side to particular people the darkness and depths behind a facade. Um, it just goes into a lot about that. So what did I think of the movie? As I said already, this is one of the first movies shot on an iPhone. All of the footage is not on an iPhone. It is interspersed throughout the movie. And it's really interesting to see what is actually possible with that medium. Um, I loved, to me, the strength of this movie is how it's shot and how it visually looks. You can see a lot of effort has gone into, I mean, when you watch a movie, you're carried along by the story, you don't really, as a viewer, pay that much attention to how it's shot. It really did stand out to me how this was shot and just how artistic it was in places. 
Um, there's a really beautiful like a bluey grey filter used in, in places. It's not just straight black and white, just the depth of colours and the depth of the light and the shadow that's used in the movie. It's, some scenes are just absolutely beautiful to look at and it's like they say that an artist paints sort of a scene and it's very much like these scenes have been looked at in an artistic manner and have been painted. Um, I hope that makes sense to you and I'm not sounding completely pretentious here. Um, I don't like arty farty pretentiousness, don't get me wrong, but I was struck by how beautiful some of these scenes are. There's a particular scene with one of the characters walking down a street with a keyboard and it's very much in focus in the background which are um, trees lit up with lights are sort of blurred into the the sort of like background area and he's very much in focus. It just looked beautiful. Um, another scene uh, with a character looking in a wing mirror of a car and we have someone that he's watching on the opposite side of the road blurred in the distance but and him in the foreground very sharp. It's just the imagination that's gone into certain shots in the movie are really beautiful. I watch a lot of movies um, and I like to see something unique, something that stands out, something that a lot of thought has gone into and it very clearly has in this case. I have to give it kudos for that. A big positive for this movie for me was the soundtrack. Now thankfully, I apologise if this offends, I hate jazz. This movie was about two jazz musicians. Thankfully the soundtrack was not jazz music, it has to be said. This soundtrack is a solely British soundtrack which is also really refreshing. It was developed by Mancunian Liam Williams. Um, it just was really fresh. Was The music was really... You watch movies and it's always the same tracks or the same sounding tracks. Everything sounds very American and it doesn't here. It's fresh, it's innovative, it stood out for me. The soundtrack is just really, really good to this movie. So yeah, in conclusion, um, this movie felt really real. That's the main way I would describe this to you. A lot of thought, a lot of artistic merits gone in here. It's obviously been a labour of love, you can tell by watching it. The performances by the two male leads were fantastic. Ruby gave a good performance, perhaps not as strong as the two male leads. Um, this isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea. If you want to see explosions and special effects and if you want a really fast moving, sort of high budget movie, this is not going to be your cup of tea. But if, like me, you enjoy watching movies, new movies from independent filmmakers that are that bit different, that have got different ways of looking at things, that are showing you new emerging talent, then check this out. It's definitely something that I enjoyed. Um, to score this one out of 10 is, is difficult. Um, do, do you score it for its own merits or do you score it alongside other movies sort of out there? Um, I enjoyed this. I really liked how it looked. I loved the soundtrack. I would score this one a 6.5 out of, out of 10. Um, yeah, I would recommend it. So this movie will be released on all digital platforms and on demand on the 5th of March. Um, have you seen the trailer? Does it sound like something you would enjoy? It's definitely something I think people should check out um, that are fans of movies. We do need to support the, the upcoming independent filmmakers and not just the, the Hollywood giants. So check it out if you get a chance. Um, let me know in the comments what you think and I look forward to speaking to you next time.